I hope so. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue this morning on uh, the trees of war. We took our text yesterday from 104, uh, Psalms 104 in verse 16. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. Amen. Amen. And we looked at yesterday about the seed. There's nothing wrong with the seed of God. Amen. It's the, it's the soil. In order for it to be a tree of the Lord, you have to... You, we looked at the seed and soil yesterday. Uh, you need to be in the church. The church is the good ground. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're going to be a tree of the Lord and full of sap, you have to be in some good ground. Amen. And God loves the church. Amen. He's coming back for the church. Amen. He's not coming back for the worship center. He's coming back for the church. Amen. Like I said yesterday, uh, he named the church is not a name for a building. It's a name for a body. Amen. 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 And uh, worship center is not a name for a body. Amen. Right. Amen. The church, uh, the New Testament word, is a name not for a building. But for a body. Amen. And he's coming back for that body. And that is the good ground in which we need uh, to be planted in. Uh, the church. Amen. Now in West Virginia, all the best timber, all the best timber is on the north facing hills. And it seems like in, in my Bible it says something about he resides in the sides of the north. Amen. So even a tree's got enough good sense to get on the piece of ground that God's looking at. Amen? Amen. Amen. And listen, you need to be in the good ground. He's looking, he cherishes, he loves, he takes care of the church. And I can't really, uh, uh, you need to get in a good Bible-believing church. Amen? Because Amen. that's what God blesses. That's Amen. Right. Amen. I'm a member of a Bible-believing church. I have a pastor. I don't care for evangelists that run around and don't have a pastor. Amen. And don't have a church. Amen. amen. That that bothers me. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I believe you ought to be a member. You ought to tithe. Amen. Yeah. Well, I believe that. Amen. You need to be in a church. So we've looked at the seed and the soil. Now we want to look at the stability of the tree. Now the tree has a root system. Amen. And uh, the, a lot of the trees in West Virginia... They have a what's called a tap root, amen. And it goes way down into the soil, amen. Yes. And that, that tap root, amen, uh, makes for a solid foundation, amen. Yes. When the wind comes along and it blows, amen, it's the tap root that keeps it anchored down in the place that it needs to be, amen. Yes. Now, I believe uh, through the scriptures uh, that we can say that Jesus Christ is our root, amen. He is, we are, uh, we're the branches, he's the vine, amen. Uh, he was a, a root planted in dry ground, it says, amen. Uh, it says in Job 29 and verse 19, my root was spread out by the waters and the dew lay all night upon my branch, amen. Listen, we need to be established, we need to be stable. It says a man shall not be established by wickedness, but by the root of the righteous, amen. Amen. We need that stability, amen. If we are going to be fruitful, amen. The wicked desire of the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit, amen. In Isaiah 53, 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground, amen. Speaking of our Lord. We're supposed to be rooted and grounded in love, amen. Amen. So what is... In Colossians 2, 7, it says we're supposed to be rooted and built up in Him, speaking of Christ. So what are, not only the taproot, I mean, my, uh, listen, my taproot, Jesus Christ, was before the foundation of the world. I don't think you can get much deeper than that. I mean, that's pretty deep, amen. That goes way down there, amen. I, I, the reason that I know I'm saved is because of the root, Amen. Amen. It's what I'm growing out of, and that's Christ. Amen. But not only the taproot, a tree has also a lateral root system in which it may support itself. Without a lateral a root system in that tree, there's no stability in the tree. It's constantly weebling and wobbling. 
and going everywhere. And every wind of doctrine, amen, carries it one way and another. I'm telling you, if we ever live in a time where there's so many doctrines, you can't count them. It's now in the day that we live in, amen. Christians are so confused, and i tell you why they're confused, amen. They don't have a root system, amen. amen. Now, I believe this tree of the Lord has seven roots, and you'll find those seven roots in Psalms 119, I'm going to give you the seven roots and then we'll go back over and look at each one. The seven roots are number one, commandments. Two, statutes. Three, laws. Four, judgment. Five, ordinances. Six, testimonies. And seven, precepts. I believe every verse in the Bible will fit into one of these seven categories. Amen. I'd like to tell you, first of all, we look at that root of commandment. That's a mandate or order given by authority. Amen. It has to deal with our obedience. If you will not take a commandment from God, amen, you are unstable. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hey, if you won't listen to your mom and dad, hey, if you guys won't listen to Brother Dixon, you won't take a commandment, you're unstable. Amen. He can't trust you. He don't know what you're going to do. Listen, if you're not going to listen to him, you're not going to listen to mom and dad, you're not going to listen to the preacher. Well, hey, if you're not going to listen to God. Hey, learning to take a commandment starts as a youth, starts as a young person, amen. If you don't submit yourself under authority, you'll be unstable, amen. 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 I believe God gives us some commandments. I believe he commands us uh, uh, to go to church, forsake not the assembling of yourself, the matter of Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Some is. So much more. As that day approaches, is it approaching? Yeah. Uh, that sounds like a commandment to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Doesn't he command us to read our Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved? Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's a commandment. Yeah. Amen? Doesn't he uh, command us to tithe? Amen. Bring your in your offerings the first day of the week. Amen. Right. Doesn't he tell us to do that? Oh, that's commandments. Amen. Right. I mean, that's just three of the basic commandments that he tells us to do. And most of us fail at those. Yeah, We're on set. Man. You want blessings, but you won't listen to God. Yeah. I didn't bless my son when I told him to take out the garbage, and he didn't do it. Did I run over and say, oh, Patrick, that was so wonderful. Here, here's $50 for not taking out the garment. <laughs> no, no, usually he got, he got his hand uh, he, high tan. Amen. 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 But you want to do nothing that God tells you to do, yet you still want him to watch yeah. over you uh, and take yeah. care of you. Amen. Uh, you are an unstable Christian. Right. Yeah. Your mind is unstable yeah. because it has not the words of God in it and you know not the commandments of God and our churches are becoming unstable because they will not listen to God anymore. Yeah. They do not yeah. know the word of God. They do not have a root system in them. Amen. Amen. So every wind of God. Then statutes. That's an act extending binding force on all citizens. Amen. <coughs> That's how you get along with society, is statute law. The Ten Commandments are basically a type of statute that covers everybody. Amen. You can't get along with society? Listen, a person that believes their Bible and reads their Bibles and knows the statutes of God and what we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to treat our neighbor, and he set, set up those statutes for everybody to go by. If he reads his Bible and he believes that Bible, you'll never have any problems in society. Amen. But we see as a whole what's happening to especially our young people. Our society is falling apart. When they took prayer and the Bible out of school, when you take light out of the place, the only thing to fill the void is darkness. Amen. Amen. So our schools have become dark places. Dark places of no understanding. Unstable places. That now we have to worry about guns coming in and people shooting. Amen. And all kinds of dark forces have came into our education system. Amen. Because they 
Don't want the Bible, but you can take the Quran in, the, in there and teach. Amen. And you can take any other book that you want to almost into the school system and nobody gets upset. But if you carry a Bible in there and if you open a Bible up and you read a verse or two, they're all upset about it. Right. 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 We're on stable. We don't know how to react and deal with society because we don't know the Word of God. Amen. An unstable Christian. Then there's laws. That definition of laws is laid, set, or fixed by a permanent supreme power. God's laid down some laws. And listen, God, Jesus Christ, could break it. But I can't. I can't walk on water. Fat don't float. Amen. If I would go, there's the law of gravity. If I get on top of the building and I go to the end and I jump off, fat falls. Amen. <laughs> Why? Now Jesus Christ could walk right off the end, keep on walking. Amen. Amen. He can break those laws. He's the one that made those laws. Amen. But we cannot break those laws. Amen. The laws of nature. But there are also laws in this Bible. <clears throat> Brother Henson mentioned one, reaping and sowing. God is not mocked whatsoever man sow, that shall he also reap. Yeah. Amen! Right. That's as good for the one that's saved right. yeah, as the right. one that's lost. Yeah, yeah, right. That's the law of God. You're going to get what you sow. Right. Amen! Yeah. I had a missionary friend that had surrendered to, years and years ago, he surrendered, he's in Canada, I believe now, uh, uh, surrendered to go to, and hence this was his testimony, to go to the mission field. And right before he got ready to go, he got throat, throat cancer. He's saved. He surrendered. He's doing the will of God. And he said, I got down on my knees and I cried out to God, Why, God? Why this? Why I surrender to you? And he, God said, You remember those two, two and a half packs of cigarettes you smoked every day for years and years and years? <coughs> Son, you're reaping. So go ahead and smoke. Go ahead and smoke. Amen. Yeah. You're going to get cancer. Chances are you're going to die. Yeah. Just be aware of it. Yeah. God's not mocked. Amen. Right. Amen. What's over a man's sword? That, that shall he also read. Amen. 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 I know one thing. I found the secret of how to lose weight. Don't he? <laughs> Amen. That's the secret. I, you know, I've got a weight problem. I've had a weight problem. I've battled a weight problem. But that's the secret. If I don't eat, I lose. Wait a minute. Amen? If you don't sin, you walk in the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen? The same word, hey, hey, when we, the same word, we yielded ourselves to wickedness. In Romans, Paul uses the same word. He says, yield yourself to righteousness. Say, well, how do you not, how do you live right? The same way that you live wicked. You yield yourself to wickedness or you yield yourself to righteousness. Same word, same word. So there's no big secret how to live godly. It's what you yield yourself to. Amen. The law is amen. There's a law of giving and receiving. Amen. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom, for the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Well, I want to get. Well, you got to give. Yeah. Amen. That, that's one of God's laws. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. And, and listen, I don't give to get. The best way is, I, I know I gave something and just forgot about it. I, God put it on my heart to give, and I gave it, and about a year or so later, he replaced it tenfold. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I never even thought about it until I, after, I, after it was given to me, and I got to think, thinking about it, and I said, my goodness, this is tenfold of what I gave. Amen. And when I gave that, I really didn't have it to give, but I wanted to give it. God put it on my heart, yeah. and I gave it. Amen. Amen. See, 
I, I don't understand it all, but it's a law of God. I don't know how He does it, but I'm just going to enjoy it. Amen. Amen. I, and listen, you won't give unless you plan to. When you come to a camp meeting, I always plan to give some money. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I always got some out there that I've got reserved and I'm going to give the offering. I'm going to get in on every offering. Amen. Even if just a little bit. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to plant some seed. Amen. 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 I want to get a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Giving and receiving. Amen. You, uh, you're on stable if all you want to do is get. Yeah. Yeah. It's more blessed to her. To give. Amen. I, that's what the Lord said. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, I just believe the Lord. You can't outgive him. I just believe you take care of him. Amen. 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 I, I listen, Amen. I've done told him, I said, Lord, that if you want me to do this, you're going to have to do it because I can. Amen. Amen. Then there's judgments. That's a sentence of doom pronounced in any cause by the judge. Amen. You're guilty. I get this all the time, preacher. You're judging me. No, no, I'm not judging. God's already judged it. Yeah. Homosexuality, yeah. sodomy is an abomination to God. He's already judged that. There's no question about it to me. We don't have to assemble like some churches do and take a vote on that to see if it's all right. No, and we already know God's already judged it. It's wrong. Adultery is wrong, amen. And especially if a preacher does it, amen. amen. We don't have, no, no. We don't no, pat him on the back. It's all right. No, God's judged it. It's wrong. It's wicked, amen. 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 You don't know the judgments of God. You don't know good from evil. Amen. And you're an unstable Christian. Amen. 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 And you'll sit in the service, and when a preacher preaches against something, because you don't know your Bible, and you have no root system, you'll sit there and get mad when all the time, and you'll get mad at the preacher, but it's God you ought to be upset with. Yeah. He's the one that wrote the book. He's the one that made the judgment. We're just delivering it, amen. amen. You do the same thing with a poor waitress at the, when you go to the restaurant, amen. Yeah. <laughs> you get upset with you because of her food. She didn't fix it all. She did to deliver it. Yeah. If you want to get mad, Somebody go back to the guy that fixed it in the kitchen. Don't blame us. We're just messenger boys. Amen. We're just waiting on God. We're trying to serve it up. Amen. I don't like my food. Well, it's not my problem. Take it up to God. Amen. You're so used to eating goat food, you don't like sheep food. Amen. Amen. You don't know the judgments of God. Therefore, you're on stage. Then you'll do those wicked things that you're not supposed to because you don't know good from evil. Amen. There's ordinances. That's a rule of action or right of ceremony. The two that we're most familiar with is the Lord's Supper. It's an ordinance. And baptism. Amen. You're supposed to be baptized. Baptism doesn't save you. But after the will, it's the will of God for you to be saved. And it's the will of God for you to be baptized. And it's the will of God for you to join the church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <coughs> well, I don't believe you join the church if you're out of the will of God. You're unstable, amen, because you don't know His ordinances. God's got a way that He does stuff. Yeah. And the reason our churches are falling apart today is because they're out of order. Right. Yeah. He's got a rule of action, a right of way. A order in which he thinks one's thing done. Here's one that we don't see much. Moreover, this is a ordinance of God. Moreover, thy brother shall trespass against thee. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Don't gossip it all over the church. Right. Right. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word, amen, to be witnessing, well, uh, well, may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. And if he neglect to, uh, to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man yeah. and as a public. Yeah. Now, when the preacher 
deals with somebody. And he sets them out from among them, like it's uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're not supposed to be running after them. We're supposed to leave them alone. Yeah. So they get right with God. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Amen. How many times have you seen somebody, when they get mad with a brother, they go to them and sit down and talk to them? And then they take two or three more and go back. And then they bring it before the church. I haven't seen that. Our churches are falling apart because we're out of order. When we get an ought with one another, instead of doing it God's way, we start suing one another. We do it man's way. Hey, you should never have a lawsuit within the church. Somebody asked me when I was pastoring about borrowing money off another brother in the church. I said, don't do it. I said, if you want to give, and I told the other guy, I said, if you want to give him that money, just give it to him. If he wants to pay it back, that's fine. If he don't, that's fine. Otherwise, don't do it. Because what will happen, they'll end up suing one another, they'll split the church, everything will fall apart because they're out of order. You got an opportunity with something? Hey, some of you got something to opt with somebody? Well, why don't you go to them and talk to them? Just you and them alone. Say, this is my problem with you. Let's sit down and get this thing right. Let's pray. Let, let's, let's stop it right now before it festers and boils over and becomes, becomes a mess. Let's just take care of it right now. That's what God wants to happen. And in fact, all didn't take two or three. But then bring it before the church. Get this thing right. Or you're out of work. You're unstable as a Christian. And why are you unstable? Because you got all that stuff in your heart. You're not, not to be there. Amen. Then there's testimonies. That's an affirmation, a declaration, a witness. There's many of them in the Bible. If we testimonies deal with our hope, if we don't know the testimonies of God, we have no hope. He said, I he said, I'll come back. Then I'm coming back. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I go to prepare a prepare place for you. That's a testimony. Yeah. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. That's a testimony of God. That's my hope. When I'm out there on the road, he said, I never he never leave me. I believe it. That's his testimony. He's, if the Bible says he cannot lie. That's his testimony, amen. The testimonies of God give us hope. If you don't know the testimonies of God, you're on stable, and you have no hope in this life. Amen. So the scriptures are the most important thing in your life. Then there's ten precepts. They're the order or rule of actions respecting moral conduct, morality. Precepts, if you'll look in your Bible every time you read it, it has to do with morality. How you, what's a moral right thing to do? Amen. The precepts is there. We don't have any morality anymore. If it feels good, do it. Amen. And that's the way it's in the church today. Uh, you'll come to it and you'll say, well, People's come to me and I, they'll say, well, I'm going to do this. And I said, really? He said, they say, I just feel that's what God wants me to do. Oh, you're just feeling. Well, where's the scripture? Yeah. Where, 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 where's God talk to you through the book? Well, I just feel like this is it. Man, I tell you, I'm not going to feel it. Amen. I found out there's a lot of times I don't feel right. Amen. Yeah. I, a lot of times, if I did what I feel, I'd be in big trouble. Uh, Amen? Most mornings, I don't feel like getting up. A lot of times, I don't feel like I'm saved. Yeah, yeah. But thank God for the Scripture. Amen. 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 Wow, morality. We do whatever we want. We hurt people. There's no honesty. Used to, why do we have to sign all these papers anymore to, to get along? When it used to be done, I, I know I talked to my dad, and he said, his, his dad, he said, all they did was go to the bank, and they shook hands with one another. And it was a done deal. And he paid it back, even if other things had to go. Even if he had to sacrifice other things. Even if he had to do with less food. Amen. He went and paid that money back. Or he went and sold something, and he paid that money back. We don't do that. You know, morals. We're, we're dishonest. I heard Brother uh, Eastep preach a message last, when I heard him preach a, 
over there when he was up camping, he preached, he, he preached on honesty. Just being honest. Amen. Listen, if you have no honesty, you're on stage. Amen. Amen. We'd like to look quickly now at the trunk. We'd like to get through two of these this morning. The trunk is the strength of God. Amen. We're supposed to be strong in the grace of God. We're supposed to be strong in the Lord. Uh, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, Quick, you like men, be strong. May I say this, that if you don't have a root system, you won't have a trunk. Amen. Amen. If you're, not, if you're not able to pick up, the sap comes from the soil. Amen. In the tree. It's the root system that gathers it up. It's the root system that supplies you for the things that you do. It's the root system that keeps you stable. Amen. The, uh, that trunk has three parts. It's the bark. That's a covering of dead cells. Amen. I found out that this is dead. Amen. This covering is dead and dying. Amen. This flesh, it's interesting to me that we care more for the dead part of us than the living. Amen. Amen. We're always sprucing up the dead part. We're always taking care of the part. I mean, we're propping it up. We're painting it up. Amen. Uh, it seems like a, a, a lot of people are either sucking something out or cutting something off. Amen. We want, we want the bark to look good. Tighten up the bark. Amen. Let the bark look good. Amen. Hey, that's the dead part. Amen. We're more concerned about the dead part of us than we are the living part. Amen. Yeah. And we feed the flesh to neglect the inner man. Yeah. Hey, it's dead. We ought to be dead to the world. Yeah. That tree has no contact with the world. It is dead to the world. It has contact with the good soil. It has contact with the root, which is Jesus Christ. But as far as the world's concerned, it's dead to it. We are crucified with Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We're supposed to be dead to the world. Amen. doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Amen. We're supposed to be dead to it. Amen. Amen. But we worry too much about the world and not enough about what God has for us. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Then right underneath the bark, there's a layer called the Cambian layer. That's where the sap is. Right underneath there. That's the, that's the type of the Holy Ghost in the tree. That's what brings life into the heart tree. The, it's the life of the tree. It transfers nutrients from the root to the trunk to the crown to the leaves. Without a root system, you'll have no trunk. Without a trunk, you'll have no crown. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, without, root, without a root system, there's no strength to grow. There's no way you can go. Amen. Amen. We, that root system, uh, you know, that in order to kill that trunk, we make den trees. When I was a kid, we would chop around all the way around that tree and make a den tree for squirrels. Why? So we could hunt them and eat them. Amen. So we cut that all the way around. We make that wide enough and cut it all the way in through the cambium, through the sap layer, the sap wood, and take it all out. And that tree would die because it couldn't overcome. It couldn't get sap to the trunk of the tree. And the trunk and the heart of the tree would die and hollow out. And the squirrels could make a dent in it. Right now, some of you, the devil's now gnawing on you. Yeah. Amen? He's gnawing away, trying to kill you. And you just sit around and look at him, and you won't take, you won't go to the altar. You won't get right with God, amen. You won't kick him off, amen. You just sit there and watch him as he's killing you, amen. He's like a beaver gnawing on you. He's trying to rob your sap. He's trying to cut you off from God. All your life, all your blessings, all the things that God wants to give you, he's trying to rob you of it, amen. Don't you just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Won't you lose him at the altar, amen? Amen. The way to kill the trunk and the crown is to cut off the flow of sap to the tree, amen. Amen. That strength. There's another part. There's the bark. Then there is the cambium sap layer. It goes all the way up. And then there's the heartwood of the tree. That's the strength of the tree. The heart grows larger as the tree gets older. The older the tree, the bigger the heart. We have Brother Barefoot back there. 
he, he didn't know. But he had a big heart. Amen. The longer a Christian lives and grows, the bigger his heart. Amen. Amen. You got gray hair this morning. You've been saved for years. You shouldn't be no little old thing. You should be a great big old person. You ought to be strong. Listen, we need the strong trees. We need the ones that's been through the storms and the fires and survived, amen. Because they was full of sap. Because they were had the root system. They built that root system. They've studied their Bible over the years. Amen. They've grown out, they've reached out, amen. Into the entire church. They've touched people's hearts, amen. Amen. Why? Because they've got a root system. They've got a heart for God. Amen. Listen, I'm just telling you in my own life, the farther I go, I want to believe I'm getting closer to it. I want to believe that I have more of a heart for God. That's our strength. Amen. That's our strength. Then the heart would just uh, say this, that the heart would, uh, there's two types of soft wood. And a hardwood, basically two types of trees. If we want to get into technicalities, there's more. But the softwood grows quickly. And the layers, the growth rings in there, the, there are larger cells, and it grows continually. But the hardwood, which mostly grows in this area and in West Virginia, it dies every year. And that's what brings strength to its heart. Amen. Because every year you can get a definite uh, growth ring. And that wood is laminate and it's very small. And that's what the, makes the wood strong. A Christian that has no death in their life has no heart. There's some things that you've got to die out to. And that tree, every year you can see the place where it died and the place where God touched it. And it grew again. And it died. Paul said, I died daily. Yeah. Yeah. You want to grow? You want to strengthen your heart? Then won't you get to the altar and die? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Get to the altar and die. One thing about a sacrifice, a true sacrifice, it never left the altar. Yeah. Amen. It never left it. It died there. Yeah. Yeah. The trouble is with us, we come because we feel guilty. And we come to the altar, we murmur a few words, and then we go back and we haven't done anything. Because we didn't die like yeah, right. Amen. That sacrifice, they brought it, and the guy that brought it was supposed to cut his throat. Yeah. And the priest caught the blood. Right. And the guy that bought it was supposed to cut it up and flay it. Yeah. He, before he left the altar, it wasn't his pet anymore. Yeah. There come a time when he put his hands on that sacrifice and it was a symbol of transference of his sins into that animal. It wasn't his pet any longer. Sin become exceedingly sinful instead of his pet if he hated it. It's not hard to kill something you hate. Yeah, yeah. The problem with you all, you don't hate your sin. Yeah, yeah. The problem with me, I don't hate my sin. Yeah. Yeah. When I hate my sin enough, I'll bring it to the altar yeah. and I will kill it and I will cut it up and I'll make it unusable. Yeah. And I won't be able to bring it back. And I'll truly die at the altar. That's good. Part of me will die and then God will bring life. Amen. 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 And then my heart strength. Yeah. Hey, they say some of the hardest wood of all the world are those, it's that wood that dries in a, that, that grows in a very extreme climate. Uh, the growth rings are so small and it grows very little every year. But the wood has tremendous you find people that's went through adversary, uh, 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 all kinds of problems in their lives, and you talk to them, their hearts are strong. They love God because they've come to know through their hardships that God's the only one that they can depend on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. What about you? Who are you depending on? Who are you? Let the doctor hear. I 
I do it for the Lord. Because, dear Lord, we thank you for this time. Now, Lord, we ask you to take it. God makes sense of it. Lord, I pray, God, you do that. In Christ's name. Amen. We'll look at, at the splendor of the adversaries. Pretty good one. That's just a, just a tree. <laughs> it's just a tree to look at every day out there. That's um, we ever put those things together. God put them together for the foundation of the world before He said tree. Amen. P.S. Remember, he made the stars also. Amen. That's just amazing. We had uh, I think the Tiptons or something give us this undescribable or something on something name of this DVD and at the end the guy's one of those probably Northridge thing because there ain't no conviction, ain't no nothing but he's an astronomer so he shows everything and the further you know you get out the further there is no earth I mean as soon as you just come a little bit away from to get the other planets we're, we're disappearing and we're so minute and the next thing you know it's like a head of a, a needle he puts a little dot in the Milky Way, you know, a little teeny dot. He says, I'm only doing that because you can't really see it. I'm just telling you, somewhere over there. And to have God that made all that. And that's just one of them. And to have the Bible says there is an edge where science says there's no ending, you know. Yeah, right. He's up there, and he comes down here, and he gets in you and I. That's just, that's just, it's unbelievable. It's like telling somebody you're going to hell. They can't believe it. But when God does something to them, they see it. Yeah. Yeah, don't get away from Holy Ghost conviction. Mm -hmm. Repentance. No, God's got to show you those things. The reason they don't preach on it, I don't think some of the preachers have ever been shown it. It's in the Bible. Oh, yeah, and you're supposed to give it out. You give hell out. It, You'd shock yourself. You go to a place anywhere and preach on hell. It's like they haven't heard a sermon on that like Amen. in eons. So, wow, where's that? It's easy. Here, I just go over and say it's right there. Look, look, see? See, that's where you're going. Right there. And then, duh, would you like to go there or would you like to go there? Hmm. I'll have to think about that. The yeah. yeah, problem is you'll probably die yeah. Yeah. and you've made your choice. Yep. You know, uh, we're crazy people. We're a tree with lines, little tight lines. Yeah. And bark is insignificant. Amen. Well, I like that. Amen. That'll fly. Yeah. All right. Um, we're, Brother Jay's here, come on up and do a song because preacher had two cups of coffee. Right? <laughs> and whenever he does the hymns, it's good to, you know, do whatever moves you. Amen. Amen. Amen.